And then he said to me, I tell you what, the job is a four year job of what we want to do. We're willing to offer you a $1 million starting bonus. I worked for the original owner of Motio AWOL for 15 years. We had a great relationship. He was a great boss and I have a lot of time for him. Very nice guy, very intelligent and very good with people and his crew and his employees. In June last year, the yacht got sold to an American gentleman and he was also a very, very nice guy, lovely guy, nice family and he wanted all the original crew to stay on board to continue running the yacht. However, his plan was to take the yacht to Florida in the States at the end of the Mediterranean charter season. So what I agreed with my wife, who was the chief steward on board at the time with the new owner, is that we happily stay on for the Mediterranean charter season and deliver the boat to the States. But once the boat got to the States, he needed a new captain then to, to take over because we didn't want to do the Caribbean season or, or yachting in, in the USA. So we did the Mediterranean season, a charter season, very, very successful, very happy. The new owner was ecstatic about the charter results. He used the boat for a few weeks as well, really enjoyed it. And then we loaded the yacht onto what's called a super yacht transport ship. I did a whole series about that. But so moving on, so we loaded the yacht and then I crossed the Atlantic on board the yacht transport ship to Port Everglades in Florida, where the new captain, uh, Chris, met us there. We unloaded the yacht off the transport ship and then we were towed up to the Lauderdale Marine Center in Florida. Once we were there, we tied up. We spent the next few days doing what's called a handover. So when you have a new captain come on board, the old captain will go through all the documentation, certificates, how the vessel operates, accounting, all those kind of things that a captain needs to know when taking over command of a new vessel. Before we continue, I'm delighted to announce that today's video has been brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. It holds up to 12 cards, plus there's room for cash. There's over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. The wallet has over 40,000 five-star reviews. The durable material means each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. The Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it, they'll let you test drive it for 45 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. It's made with RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpockets. So be sure to use my link in the description box below. Use discount code SYC to get 10% off. That's discount code SYC to get 10% off. Thanks again to The Ridge Wallet for sponsoring today's video. It just so happens that once we finished the handover, it was the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. So I decided to stay on four or five extra days to attend the boat show, to see some old friends, hopefully see some familiar faces, and maybe have a little bit of a, a nosy at some new yachts, some new yacht designs, and um, boats and chase boats and all boating stuff. I still love it. I like going to shows and seeing all the new, all the new toys. And so. During the show, I met up with Nico and Victoria from the YouTube channel Naughty Styles, and we decided to do a meet and greet together whilst the show was on. So we put a post out, well, I put posts out on my social media, they put posts out on their social media that we're gonna do a meet and greet at the Gosling Bar, which is smack bang, pretty much smack bang in the middle of the of the show, for the followers and the fans of both of both our channels, because a lot of people who watch this channel also watch um, Naughty Styles and the other, you know, YouTuber channels as well. So we agreed a time and the place. We put all the posts out. We arrived and then slowly but surely people started arriving, you know, people asking questions about the video, what my future was at the time because I, they knew I was leaving AWOL. So everybody's, you know, very curious about what was the next, next for me. And just talking about videos and a lot of people that came were existing yacht or boat owners. One family actually that I met, which is brilliant, I love the story, they had bought a boat and they named it A Way of Life, AWOL. 
because they knew that's the meaning for us, a way of life. So they love the channel so much and the videos that we do so much, they named their own boat a way of life. I never knew how much of a inspiration the YouTube channel was to boat owners. I know it's a lot of yacht crew watch this and they're inspired and get motivated by these videos, but I never thought somebody would name their boat after AWOL as well. But anyway, I'm deviating from the story here. That was really cool, met some really cool people, had all types of boats. We had like these, one of the owners had one of these go fast cigarette boats. Some of them had like small, like slower, like trawler style vessels like Nordhavens. So it was a nice, it was a good mix of people of all different ages. So it was really nice talking to them, having a few drinks, having a laugh, sharing some stories. And then one particular gentleman rocked up. He introduced himself and he was with a, another gentleman, a younger guy, relatively big guy, and he introduced him as his security, his bodyguard, which I thought was a, a bit unusual, but you know, you just don't know who's gonna rock up to these events. And then he started talking to me about the channel, and then he said, look, I want to, I'm buying this, this boat. It was around a 50 meter. I want you to be the captain. And he said, I've been watching your videos for a long time. Uh, from the very beginning, from the refit videos we did on AWOL in Italy a number of years ago, to the way we docked the vessel. He said, I like the way you communicate with your crew, I just like your energy, and I would love to have you on board as captain. So bear in mind, this is a meeting greet, so lots of people around. So I said to him, look, this is probably not the best place to talk about this. Let's have another talk another time, and we can you know, discuss it more in depth when we're a bit more private and we haven't got other people listening in on this, on this conversation. Because at the time, honestly, I wasn't looking for a job. I wasn't really asking to be interviewed or proposed a position. I didn't want to have a good time at the boat show. Uh, managed to catch up with some old friends. But anyway, so we finished the, the meet and greet. And then later on that afternoon, early evening, I was at the Denison yachting stand drinking all their beer. <laughs> Bear in mind I was off duty uh, because Bob Denison is the nicest guy in the yachting business. A lot of time for Bob Dennis and Dennis and Yachting, check them out. Shout out. They always, he always invites me to these events and their parties they do. So I'm very, very grateful. And I eat all their food as well. So Bob, thanks again. So I was just happened to be at the Dennis and stand. And then this gentleman happened to have rocked up with his security guard again. And I had some free time, I was on my own and there was a, a seating area available. So I said, look, have a seat. Let's have a bit of a bit of a chat, you know, while we're here. Again, probably not the best idea to have these kind of conversations when you've had a, a few beverages, should we say. These kind of things I like to talk about, you know, during a work day, clear mind. But I thought, you know, I'm taking, I'm on time off here. It's the boat show, I'm having a good time. This guy's here, let's just have, let's have a chat. I'm not gonna make any decisions now. So we sat down, he pulled out this beautiful um, Cuban cigar and we started talking about his, him, his boating history, his family, his past. And then we went into more his business side, what he, what he did, his companies, all the things that he did to make him as successful as he was financially. And so he said, look, I wanna buy this boat. It's around 50 meter. He told me the builder of the boat and it's a builder that is probably in my bottom three builders in the industry. I just don't, the quality is terrible. They get away with a lot of stuff and I just don't understand how they manage to sell so many boats. I will never mention their name because it's not in my place to tarnish their reputation, but uh, speak to speak to captains and engineers and they'll probably uh, agree agree with me, the bottom three. But anyway, that's beside the point. So if, when he first, as soon as he mentioned the brand of the boat already, I was like, God, he needs to give me a really good reason to change my mind here. And he spoke about the itinerary. Now the itinerary was really interesting. He wanted to do a world tour over a four year period with his family on board and having other guests coming and going. Now this included things like the fjords of Norway. He wanted to go to the Pacific Ocean. He wanted to go to the Galapagos. He wanted to go all over the globe. And for me, for most captains, that's like the dream opportunity, the dream job. But bear in mind my mindset at the time, you know, I've been in the yachting business, working on board super yachts for the last 20 years and reaching a different stage in our lives, my wife and I, she'd been working on board for 10 years. And you do, although it's a fantastic job, I love it. You do, it's a big commitment. 
you do miss out on a lot of things like you know we've missed out on weddings sadly we missed out on funeral other family events and over time you know you want to try different things so my mindset was was a bit different and then i started telling him all this and he could see that he was slowly you know losing me if it was probably a different boat brand i would have uh, been a lot more a tentative a lot more interested and then he said to me i tell you what the job is a four-year job of what we want to do we're willing to offer you a one million dollar starting bonus and as you can ma imagine i was caught off guard i don't know of any of my fellow yacht captains out there that have been given this kind of offer and so obviously I was caught off guard. I was like, oh, are you being serious? Is he joking? He goes, no, I'm 100% serious. We really want you to be our captain. So obviously I thought to myself, let's not make any decisions yet. So I said to him, look, that's a very kind, generous offer. I'm heading home the next day or two. I need to sit down, talk to my wife and you know, work a few things out. Can I get back to you? He goes, yep, yeah, Tristan, absolutely. So anyway, we, we parted away that evening. Um, Denison put on a great event on top of this car park, right, on the top level. And it was like these beautiful classic cars were there. They had music, live music, they had all these different events happening. It was a great evening. Met up with some really old friends of mine. I hadn't seen them in, in a very long time, so we had a very good night. Anyway, a day or two later, flew back to flew back to Europe and sat down with, with the wife. And we seriously considered it because, you know, a million dollars isn't isn't a joke. So we looked at how this could benefit us and we looked at our current finances. And fortunately over the years, my wife and I have been, you know, relatively sensible with our investments, smart with our money. And we decided that even though this is a, a, a big starting bonus, this is a lot of money, you know, we, it's not going to improve our lives. And why do we say that? It's because I had to commit for four years on board a yacht. I've been yachting for 20 years, ready to, you know, we're in the mode now, maybe we want to start a family, starting a new business, do my own thing. And so we decided to decline the the very generous offer. So I messaged the, the chap of this boat and I think he was quite surprised. I said, look, I'm very grateful for, for this very generous offer, but I'm going to have to respectfully decline which I don't think he was expecting and I'm sure a lot of you watching this weren't expecting one thing I've learned working in this industry obviously we meet a lot of wealthy people and once you're in a comfortable position financially having more money doesn't improve your life that's what I've learned if we were in more financial difficulty we I would probably definitely would have accepted the the position I know a lot of people watching this thinking Tristan you're absolutely mad but luckily over the years, we managed to start our own businesses. You know, this YouTube channel is doing pretty well, got other things going on. We decided that we didn't we didn't want to do it. And, you know, our future our plans was more important than that. If you want to see a video of how I was offered to become a drug smuggler, then check out this video right here. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you join me next time. See you then. Ciao, ciao. Goodbye. Arrivederci.